Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm not going to be talking about modular synths. Wait! It's still going to be cool, I promise. Just give me a chance. Today we're going to be looking at a sound installation I did as part of my masters. The project is called NC++ and it's a software interpretation of Terry Riley's landmark minimalist piece, NC. And what I mean by that is that I coded some software which would create some virtual performers, which would then perform Riley's piece and I built a physical installation around that. But what's the big deal you might be asking? Can't you just take the sheet music from NC and transcribe it into MIDI notes and then press play in Ableton or something? Well, no, NC works a little bit differently than other pieces of music, so let's have a look. Now, here's what normal music looks like. A lot of you will be very familiar with this. And here's what the sheet music for NC looks like. So, how do you play NC? Well, all of the performers are given the same 53 bars of music, and they start at bar number one. They then repeat number one for as many times as they feel like, and eventually move on to bar number two. But because everybody is going to be repeating a different number of times, gradually they shift in and out of sync with each other. So as you go through the piece, different people are playing different melodies, which all are kind of interlocking and creating really nice polyrhythms and harmonies. And for this to work properly, the performers need to be listening very carefully to each other so that they don't fall too far behind or rush too far forward and it can become a bit messy otherwise. And along with these bars of music, he provided some performance directions and these explain how you're supposed to play the piece. It's these performance directions that I looked at and turned into algorithms to use for the software. For me, the best performance direction that Terry Riley gives is that any number of any instruments can play. And I may have taken it a bit further than he expected by removing humans from the equation, but I think it's a really interesting look at the piece and I hope you do too, so let's have a look at how I made it. So this is the NC++ software, and it's not much to look at, but it does give you a lot of very useful information. And so each of these sections represents one of the virtual performers, and it gives you a lot of information about them. So, for example, the tempo they're playing at, uh, what bar they're in, how many beats are in the bar, how many notes are in the bar, what notes they're playing, the velocity at which they're playing the notes, etc. And all of this information is generated as MIDI information. So you can go to a digital audio workstation like Ableton and plug it straight into synthesizers that you might have. And this means it's really flexible. So for the installation, I used samples of instruments that you'd usually find in ensembles that play the piece. But here, for example, we're using pad sounds. And so, and so that creates a whole different kind of sound for the piece, but the notes and the harmonies are still the same. So what's great about using MIDI is that you can just plug in whatever kind of sounds that you want. You can use software synthesizers, hardware synthesizers, modular synthesizers if you have MIDI to CV converters. And so it's very, very flexible. So I really liked playing around with the different kind of sounds that you could use. And here are some examples from when I originally submitted the piece. So with the drone example, I was basically removing all of the rhythm information and with the percussion, I was doing the same with the pitch and leaving just the rhythms and seeing what that sounded like. So I thought that was quite interesting, but let's take a look at how I made it happen. Well, there's a full walkthrough on my website if you want to go really into detail, um, but here I'll just give you a little look at some of the most interesting parts. So this is the code that I wrote uh, to create the software. It was written in C++ using Open Frameworks, which is a open source framework, um, which creates a lot of the stuff for you so you can kind of just dive in and get coding. And that was really, really helpful. So what I had to do was go through all of the music for NC and take a look at each bar and transcribe the note into MIDI information. And so here we have all of 60, 64, 60, 64, 60, 64. That matches up to these notes here. And not only did I have to do that for every note in the piece, but I also had to get the rhythm information. So here we have where all of the notes fall in each bar. And that took a long time to figure out. 
Um, but all of this information is known to each of the virtual performers and that allows them to perform the piece. Every time they begin a bar, they roll a random number and that determines how many times they will repeat the phrase. But they also have to be aware of where all of the other performers are in the piece. And they can look and see, okay, if someone's on bar 13 and I'm only on bar 10, I need to start hurrying up and get ahead so that I don't fall too far behind and destroy the harmonies and destroy all of the patterns that Terry Riley has strived to create. As I say, there's a lot more that goes into this. If you're interested in the code side of things, then definitely go to my website, check out the in-depth walkthrough detail, and that will explain everything that you need. So that was the software side of things, but what about the hardware? Well, the installation was running on these Raspberry Pi 3 computers. They're really nifty little things that are, first of all, a lot cheaper than buying like a laptop or a Mac mini or something like that. And secondly, they're very small, so they're great for hiding or kind of sticking out the way and not taking up a lot of room. So each performer had one of these with all the code and sounds on, and the sound was then running through to one of these, which is an Adafruit Class D amplifier. So this allowed me to control the volume and boosted the signal from the Raspberry Pi. And these were just wired straight into the speakers. All it took is two little wires and you're done. I also then had to laser cut wood panels, which was great. I had to go through the schematics of the Raspberry Pi and the amp and see all the measurements of where there's like little holes that you can screw things in. So I had to find out where they were um, really accurately, measure it on the wood um, create a template using Adobe Illustrator and then send that to the people who did the laser cutting and they came out with a bunch of these. So now I have a template and I can kind of almost just like print out these things. Obviously it takes more time and it's a bit more expensive but it was a really fun thing to learn how to do and as a bonus the speaker holes I now use as coasters so every little helps. So in C++ is a true representation of in C. It's taking the music and the instructions and it's making a performance out of them. But at the same time, it's removing the human element and leaving kind of just what Terry Riley was giving us in the first place. And so you kind of begin to question the role of the performer in performing music and how important they are, uh, which is maybe a little bit scary. <laughs> and for me, what was really interesting was taking my own thought patterns and my approaches to performing and somehow narrowing it down into an algorithm, something that a computer could understand and perform forever. So thanks very much for watching. If you're interested in more work like this, you can see some on my website. I'll be back soon with some more videos about experimental music and modular synths, so subscribe if you want to see more. And thanks for watching. See you later.